Hello, everyone. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks for joining us. We are live on Zoom and live streaming to YouTube. In just a minute, I will introduce our special guest who will tell us about an important organization with which many of you are familiar and review some of the issues that have been important to maintaining uh, secular democracy. But before that, a reminder that if you're catching this event on YouTube, you can join us on Zoom for these events. To get the login information, go to our meetup group at meetup.com slash CFL Freethought. You can join us there and be sure to RSVP for upcoming online events and put them on your calendar. This event is part of our reoccurring educational events that we continue to stream as YouTube events. You can find all of our past educational events and follow us on YouTube at youtube.com slash CFL Freethought. Lastly, if you wanna be sure to get the monthly email updates for upcoming activities, all of which are online right now, go to tinyurl.com slash CFFC newsletter, all one word. Give us your email and any other contact information you like and we will promise to keep in touch. Of course, we hope you're already following us on Facebook. You can find us there at CFL Freethought. Now, if you're with us in the Zoom meeting today, your microphones um, should be muted uh, so that you don't accidentally interrupt the presentation. Please remain on mute uh, until question time. And if you uh, keep your camera on, please avoid any immediate distractions there if you can. Uh, You can find the chat option available at the bottom of your screen on your computer. So you can feel free to chat and ask questions down there. If you're on a mobile device, just tap the screen and it should appear as an option. Chat is where we want you to ask those questions. So put those in there and we'll get to as many as we can. So let's get started. Today, our special guest is Rabbi Meryl Shapiro. He is a friend and ally of the CFFC who leads a local chapter of the Americans United for the separation of church and state up in Flagler County, Florida, uh, also called the Atlantic Coast chapter if you're looking. He's a past president of both the Richmond, Virginia and Flagler County chapters. Merrill studied electrical engineering at Cornell University and the New Jersey Institute of Technology, Jewish studies and education at Ohio State University, served as a graduate research assistant at Hebrew University of Jerusalem and was an instructor of Jewish history at the University of North Florida. He and his wife live in in the Palm Coast and have two daughters and five grandchildren, I believe, at the last count. And to be clear before we begin, uh, Rabbi Shapiro is a theist, but I assure you that he shares the same passion we do for secularism and has even been a part of litigation in Florida in the past, putting himself on the correct side of important issues. He's allied with us in activism before, and we keep in touch on state and local issues that need attention. So Meryl, welcome. It's good to see you. I I think we met a few years ago at an Americans United meeting in Central Florida. Actually, it was at your home. Oh yeah, yeah. But that, okay, that enough. Thank you very much for that that warm introduction. You know what I should have, you gave to me in advance, was University of Central Florida, where I thought I lived in Orlando with my family for many years. But- Uh Thank you very much. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Yeah, I personally am eager to promote secularism, particularly in the government. Uh, But I I think you need to keep in mind that the movement to create a secular society still has, believe it or not, lots of support within the religious community. Uh, Do not look at your opponents and think that all people of faith are the same. That is not the case. And uh, it it pays to pay close attention. We may talk about that some more, but uh, I'm flattered and honored to have been asked. Uh, I represent Americans United for Separation of Church and State on the one hand. On the other hand, this has, so I represent the organization, but the mission of the organization and the goals are something that I find more important. But let me begin by saying that this is my wife, Robin, who I lived and who is right here, not not too far away, she says hi. And we have two daughters, our daughter, Sarah, who lives in New York, and our daughter, Amy, who lives in Jacksonville. 
The only reason they appear here is because uh, since we raised two daughters through their teenage years, if you want to make me most comfortable, you'll interrupt me while I'm speaking. And so you can take yourself off mute merely by pressing the space bar on your keyboard and jump in there and feel free. I, of course, will welcome, uh, I'm not sure with the screen share that I can see the chat, but the, if someone puts a question in chat, please interrupt me, somebody, and uh, convey that. Uh, and, and I'll take questions later. I'll take questions during the discussion. Uh, this is a topic about which I very much enjoy speaking. Uh, so we'll get through the department of, uh, I don't know if I call it crass commercialism, but this is an advertisement and provided by the Office of Americans United for Separation of Church and State of Washington. Uh, and you see we're nonpartisan. We're a 501c3 as you are. So we have to be nonpartisan and careful about that. Uh, this will come up later as far as churches engaging in politics. We'll talk about that. So you're all familiar, I hope, with the First Amendment, <laughs> that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So there's the Establishment Clause. The government cannot establish a state religion or cannot favor one religion over another. And nobody can prohibit the free exercise of religion either. Uh, Thomas Jefferson in 1802, who was a hero of ours, uh, we have to separate our feelings about his slave ownership, but uh, he spoke of a wall of separation. We want to guarantee and see ourselves and ask you to join us, by the way. You can pay dues to the organization, you're welcome, but just become active in whatever way you feel comfortable in maintaining that wall of separation that's so much under attack these days. Uh, the Florida Constitution as well guarantees that there's no law respecting establishment of religion, prohibiting or penalizing the free exercise. And in the fourth line from the bottom, let me call your attention, no revenue of the state or any political subdivision or agency thereof shall ever be taken from the public tre treasury directly or indirectly in the aid of any church, sect, or religious domination, or sectarian institution. This is called a Blaine Amendment by some. We've renamed it No Aid. Uh, Blaine was a vice president under President Ulysses S. Grant. And uh, I think he was a lapsed Catholic, but nonetheless, he was very eager to see that the government did not support religion. And so the Florida's constitution is one of 37 states that has this law that no revenue of the state can go to any religious organization. Uh, probably honored more in the breach than not. And it's, I think, all of our job to raise our voices to make sure that the Florida constitution, Article 1, Section 3, is adhered to. More about that later. So America's United was founded in 1947. Um, we've fought the religious right, uh, the religious uh, evangelicals, uh, and so on. And particularly, and I didn't include it in this presentation, the rise of what's called Christian dominionism. Christian organizations who feel that Christianity should rule our country and the principles of Christianity should rule our country to the point where they have employed uh, historical revisionists, David Barton, the most famous, who claimed that the United States was founded on Christian principles. You can imagine, by the way, how Jews, Muslims, and others feel about that, let alone those of you who are free thinkers and secularists, uh, that, uh, well, one of the more famous contentions is that it'll come up in 10 days, uh, that every president upon his, his or her, well, there's no her, his inauguration has added the words, not in the Constitution, so help me God when taking the oath of office. That's what David Barton has told everybody. As the events of this past week show, there are people who will believe almost anything, and they believe that every president said, so help me God. 
it is not the case. And presidents all the way, at least through Abraham Lincoln, did not say so help me God when taking the oath of office. Uh, I'm afraid on January 20th, when we're all watching uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, that so help me God will be in there. But we question its appropriateness. At any rate, so we believe that you have a constitutional right to practice your religion. And this is most important, or, or refrain from taking part in religion. Uh, you might notice, let's go back for a minute to the power shall make no law respecting a uh, establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof does not really provide protections, does not discuss, ignores free thinkers, secularists. It protects re from re religion, uh, religious establishment, but the free exercise, how do you free, uh, freely exercise your right as a secular individual? That could be problematic. Uh, nonetheless, uh, uh, so Americans have, and, and the government is required to remain neutral on religious questions. Uh, so our issues include, and I hate to read what you can read as easily as I, uh, but let me uh, localize this a little to Florida and even Central Florida religion in public schools or in schools that are funded by the government. And that's the issue presented by the Florida constitutional point that I made before. Uh, Faith-based initiatives, we'll discuss a little bit. There are many, many prisons in Florida that are run by religious organizations and people who share religious beliefs with a religious organization get privileges those who deny the existence of God do not get those privileges. Uh, we combat, and uh, David Williamson is famous for combating official prayer, uh, religious displays, and ceremonial religion as his invocations at the Brevard County uh, uh, Board of Commissioners. Uh, school vouchers is a biggie here in Florida. We'll talk about uh, discrimination and exemptions, free exercise, churches and politics. There are churches here in Florida, in central Florida, in Apopka, for example, that go out of their way to violate the law and endorse political candidates. Uh, Section 501c3 of the Internal Revenue Code provides a tax exemption to churches and religious organizations, and even to the Central Florida free thought community on condition that they do not involve themselves in partisan politics. Uh, and yet pastors from pulpits in churches in Central Florida will stand up and endorse certain candidates because of their religious views and still go about claiming their uh, nonprofit status, their tax exempt status, and most importantly, that people who write a check to their organization can deduct it on their taxes. Uh, more commonly than in the past three or four years, we recently adopted a more aggressive stance on marriage and reproductive justice and other privacy issues. It's not the government's business if two people are the same gender. It's not the government's business about what a woman wants to do with her body and other privacy issues. And the judiciary, uh, only have to read the newspapers in the past few months why that's so significant for us as well. So we're engaged in several different fronts, protect my neighbor, uh, attempts to use religion to discriminate against LGBTQ people so that if a, a same-sex couple wants to get married and goes to a bakery and says, we want you to bake a wedding cake, the owner cannot say, sorry, because you're two people of the same gender, I don't believe in that. I am not going to bake a cake for you. I'll bake a cake for anybody else who's two different genders, but not the same. Uh, Project Fair Play is reports, and we then report to the Internal Revenue Service, churches that engage in politics. Uh, and finally, Operation in, in Inclusion, uh, we find that many invocations, like the ones that uh, 
David and others sued the Brevard County Commission for, uh, exclude people who don't believe in their belief. Uh, the city of Jacksonville constantly and consistently opens their city council meetings with prayers to Jesus, even though a significant number of members of the population of the electorate don't accept Jesus as at all meaningful. They refuse to stop and we are considering taking them to court. Uh, they have received, by the way, demand letters from Americans United for Separation and Church and State to stop that practice. Uh, public schools have to serve everybody. Uh, voucher schools, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, uh, receive public money. They have to serve children of various religious backgrounds. Uh, and we're particularly concerned about teaching intelligent design and creationism alongside evolution and science classes. Intelligent design and creationism are not science and don't belong in the science classroom. Uh, schools must remain religiously neutral. Faith-based initiatives, uh, we I mentioned, of, uh, we have prisons that are run by religious organizations. We have other we have schools, we have all sorts of things. Uh, healthcare in North Carolina, the, uh, all adoptions go through a ministry called Little Sisters of the Poor. And a woman by the name of Amy Madonna wanted to adopt somebody through uh, Little Sisters of the Poor. And they looked at her and said, sorry, you're Catholic you're not, you don't believe in uh, what we do, we will not place a child with you and your family. So you can imagine if one, a member of the Free Thought Society, any Free Thought Society, any humanist society, came and said, I want to adopt a child, they would ask you, do you believe in God? I said, no. And it says, we will not place a child with you. We are prepared to take that to the Supreme Court. Our legal department is working on it as we speak. Uh, so, yeah, when we talk about faith and, and uh, character-based initiative, faith-based initiatives in Florida, three correctional institutions, Lottie, Wakula, and Hillsborough, are, the entire institution is faith-based. So if you want privileges in those correctional institutions, you cannot practice Judaism, Islam, Hinduism, or even be a free thinker. You must declare your belief and you must declare your reliance on the gospel according to John chapter three, verse 16, God so loved the world that he gave to the world his only begotten son, Jesus, so that through him we might attain salvation. If you do not believe that, you lose privileges. And there are dormitories with similar restrictions at uh, correctional institutions in Florida, Everglades, Polk, Tomoka, which is near me, Gulf, Lancaster Union, and Lowell. And so you as a taxpayer are paying to support these institutions, these prisons, and they are taking your money and promoting their religion. Yeah, yeah, and I don't know how you feel about that, but uh, maybe I hope, you're, I, I, I hope your blood is boiling. But mine boils, as I, as I say. I'll try not to become too emotional here. Uh, government-sponsored religion. We, our in-house lawyer argued uh, the town of Greece versus Galloway. Galloway was one of two women who were beginning a business and went to the town of Greece, New York, a suburb of Rochester, New York, and needed a variance. The meeting began with an invocation. When everyone was asked to rise, they did not rise. When everyone was asked to bow their head, they would not bow their head. And then they were denied the variance that they sought to begin their business. Why? They felt it was because they did not participate in the opening prayer. This case went all the way to the Supreme Court. We actually lost, but nonetheless gained some advantage. And one of those advantage is that members of the city council and anyone on the government payroll may not offer an invocation since that's government speech. And so the town has to line up clergy of all kinds and secular officiants included uh, 
the Jacksonville Free Thought Society, the Northeast Florida Free Thought Society uh, has twice sent an officiant to offer an invocation at their city council meetings. Uh, I've been there and many of the very religious city council members were not happy, but we don't care. Mm -hmm. uh, and so here is, oh, okay, you know what? David reworked this and I didn't get to see this, but here's an example of a case brought by Brevard County. You guys won this case and are successfully on the path of getting Brevard County to cut out its uh, practice of having government people offer invocations. Uh, David, if you would unmute and tell us where, what's the status of this case now? Yeah, sure. So um, thanks for bringing this up. I was glad to see it here. Um, we actually um, received our settlement agreement, which paid our attorneys a whole bunch of money um, last February. Uh, as well as the small amount to each of the five plaintiffs you see on the screen uh, and also to the organizations on the screen there. Um, and we were going to wait till the end to mention this, but since you asked uh, to talk about it, we actually have an invocation. We just scheduled our first invocation, and I don't know if it's the first or the second invocation in Brevard County since they stopped having invocations, and that'll be uh, at 9 a.m. on Tuesday the 26th. So look for information on that in our meetup group and Facebook page relatively soon. Great. Uh, what I would urge you to do, by the way, is when they have secular invocation, they've stopped invocations, write letters if you're a constituent in Brevard County and applaud what they're doing. We become known as naysayers and complainers. We need to applaud when people give secular, uh, non-religious based invocations, uh, humanist invocations, and encourage them to do that. Uh, last I heard, they were, I thought they were appealing. I'm glad they stopped the practice and that we're getting some satisfaction. Uh, by the way, every one of these cases, this is an example, are precedent so that the decision on this was actually sent to every city. There are 19 members of the Jacksonville City Council. The decision was sent to them. The same here in Flagler County. By the way, the school board, which may never offer invocations since it's not a legislative body, doesn't make laws, also received copies of this decision so they recognize it and a notification that the plaintiffs were to receive at the hands of the defendants. It's at 700000 on the order of $700,000, if I recall, David. Uh, the, well, it's, it was actually when we finished negotiating that, and it always starts out higher as you, as you yeah. know, it was down to 490000 Okay, so it's a, it's a good chunk of money and lots of uh, government bodies are reluctant to pay it. In Dover, Pennsylvania, by the way, we won a case on the teaching of evolution, I'm sorry, the teaching of creation and creationism in their public schools. Uh, they were going to appeal. The public rose up and said, you're spending a whole ton of our taxpayer money on this litigation that's unnecessary cut out the teaching of creationism. Let's stick with the science of Darwinian evolution. Uh, so uh, school vouchers, we're all paying for religious education uh, here in Florida and we're paying, everybody's paying to support religious schools with which uh, we don't agree. We'll talk about that a little bit further. Uh, the question of uh, can two people of the same gender marry in Florida was up in question. Reproductive rights in Florida are constantly in danger. Uh, uh, we want to defend the courts. And so bringing cases related to our issues like uh, reproductive rights and gay people marriage to the courts has become problematic. As we know, on the federal level, Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump, and so on have made sure to appoint, and there are, I believe they've appointed over the four years, 300 very conservative judges to the federal bench. But, excuse me, Governor Scott and Governor DeSantis have, point, have appointed and to the bench, uh, and nominated and gotten on the bench, also very conservative judges. So the question arises for our very active legal department, 
are we bringing cases before bad judges and giving them an opportunity to make bad law? And so litigation is not so much the way to go to a certain degree. Lobbying, each of us picking up the phone and calling our legislators, that might work a little better until the conservative swell moves through the courts. And so that's the issue. That's why we need to defend the courts and judicial nominees have to uphold the principles for which they were appointed to the bench. And that doesn't happen so much. I mentioned before that in Apopka, but certainly all over our region, churches endorse religious candidates. That is forbidden. Uh, so as an American, you have the right to believe or to not believe whatever you want about religion. You can contribute your harder money only to the religious institutions of your choice. If there are any, no one can tell you what religious organization you must support. No one can force you through the power of taxation to support beliefs that you don't share. You should be able to make decisions about your own health care and your own reproductive rights. It's nobody else's business. You should be able to marry the person you love. You should be able to uh, live your life as you see fit. So let's talk about, uh, uh, as you see the last action at the bottom of the page, this is a bill introduced in the Florida uh, Senate by uh, Dennis Baxley. Uh, I believe he's Lake County, Lake and Marion County. He's within our area. Uh, it was introduced, as you see at the very bottom, on December the 17th. So it's relatively new, but we're going to see some uh, more. So what I need to ask is, how many, you know, can, there's a little button, a show of hands. How many of you have ever called a legislative office of one of your representatives? I don't have the whole, so we have one. To uh, Jenny, Rick, Richard, uh, can you tell us how it felt to make that call? Was it scary at first? Were you frightened? Uh, you can unmute yourself by pressing the space bar. Richard, Jenny, does anyone care to share their experience in making a call to the legislative office? Yeah, I reached an aide, and uh, they immediately immediately identified themselves as an aide and just said they would take the note and pass it on. Great. Did they ask you your zip code by any chance? I can't remember. It's been a little yeah. longer than a week ago. So yeah, it's most, uh, uh, and Sandra, we'll get to you in just a second. Uh, it's most common that they ask your zip code. They want to know if you're a constituent. If you're not a constituent, they don't care. So you need to know, we all need to know who our representatives are in the Florida House of Representatives. And we also need to know who our senators are in the Florida Senate. If uh, I had known that in advance, this or go you know, Central Florida, the CFFC covers a wide area. So we have several senators and many more representatives, but I would put their numbers up on the screen, ask you to take out your cell phone and ask you to enter into the memory of your cell phone. You can call them anytime. And as, was that Jenny who just answered? Uh, you're going to get an aide. And that aide you know, is 21, 22, 23 years old. Don't be intimidated. And, that, and but these people work for us. Unfortunately, what's gone on is they think we work for them. They work for us. They need to hear from us. And, <coughs> excuse me, we need to express our opinion. If we are silent, we will get what we deserve. Uh, I see there were two other hands. Sandra, did you want to add your experience about your experience? Yes. Please. I have called several times my senators and my representative, and they have asked me for my, uh, what do you call it? My, um, your you zip know, my, my zip code. Yeah. 
And I have, when I speak to them, told them specifically what my interests are. And they thank me. And right. that's the experience. Uh, they want to hear from you. They want your vote. They want, they are assuming that 99% of us don't know what's going on, don't care. But when you call, you are just the back, fact that you are calling is so important that you care, that you're engaged, that you're watching, you're watching them for future issues. We need to be able to speak up. And in this particular case, on this bill that I'll talk about in just a minute. Anybody else have that experience? And I see there are two items in chat, but I can't access them, I don't think. Uh, but if somebody will read them to me and... The, the items in chat are just links if you want to find your representative. Great. And, and I urge you, find your representative. Put it, the memory of your telephone, your and store thousands, if not tens of thousands of numbers, put their numbers in it and call them and say, I'm unhappy about X, Y, Z that I read in the paper about what the state legislature is doing. How much more so, by the way, uh, our representatives in the House in U.S. Congress and in both in the Senate and the House of Representatives, it's time that they heard from us and we need to let them know how we feel without going in and breaking windows and breaking into the Capitol building. But we need to speak up. And with the courts closed off to us, this is more important than ever. So here's a bill that uh, comes from Dennis Baxley and uh, uh, co-sponsored by Ben Albritton. and it's put in the hopper and the legislator, legislature will continue. Uh, it requires certain teachers to set aside time for a moment of silence. That's maybe okay, maybe not okay. Uh, teachers can't make suggestions, it's the nature of reflection, but it deletes a provision authorizing the school boards to provide a brief period of silent prayer or meditation. So the school board does this done on a teacher level and the teachers can encourage parents or guardians to discuss the moment of silence with their children and make suggestions as to the best use of their time, which inevitably will be reciting Christian prayers and so on. Hidden in this bill, and you have to do a search on it, is the opening of an avenue by which Bible reading can return to the classrooms of our public schools. And thus, you and I will be authorizing that unless we tell our representative when this bill comes up, Senate Bill, uh, let's see if I can move this way, Senate Bill 282, please vote against it and how disappointed we'll be if they do not vote against it. Uh, let me set now. Uh, there we go. Oh, here's Bill Baxley's Dext district. If anybody's from Lake County, I believe this is Seminole, and this is Orange County over here. So it borders on Orange and Seminole County, and Lake Sumter Marion. Uh, others, I did not get the uh, maps, but you can easily look them up. Uh, go to that link that's provided in the chat. So also on December the 4th, uh, Anthony Sabatini, who serves Lake County uh, and co-sponsored by David Borrero, I don't know his name, uh, entered into the Hopper House Bill 33. Uh, a social media website is subject to private right of action. A certain website in the state under certain conditions. Prohibits the website from using hate speech as a defense authorizes the attorney general to bring action on behalf of website users, provides exceptions. And those exceptions are to protect all sorts of forms of religious speech. So the description often avoids the essence of the bill. And the real reason this bill is being offered is to allow, is to prohibit anybody from interfering with religious speech on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, and, and so on. Uh, so it says, whereas the state is interested, uh, oh, they oppose anybody who, the bill will outlaw the censoring the user's religious speech. What they're really concerned about is religious speech, and they wanna make sure that anybody who wants to evangelize us on social media can go ahead and, uh, 
do their thing without, with impunity, without being interfered with. We oppose this and we hope that you'll pick up the phone, call your state representative and say, please oppose House Bill 33. Can I ask a question about that? Anything. Um, yeah, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting there and thinking about what, how you're describing this. And I'm wondering if, if somebody based on their you know, deeply held religious beliefs are proposing hate, hateful thoughts, you know, anti-LGBTQ or something else, then would that then not be able to be censored? Uh, from a theoretic point of view, it would not be able to be censored. From, well, from a practical point of view, it would not. I will tell you of a personal experience, if I may, in the Gospel according to John, chapter 8. John says, Jesus called the Jews the children of Satan, that we are satanic. We as Jews are satanic. That is widely regarded as hate speech, but because it's in the so-called New Testament, or sometimes I call it the Second Testament, or the, uh, because it's in their Bible, they will strive to protect it, even though it's hate speech. So these are things that have to be negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis. And what's been taken away from us is the idea that if this passes, that we can go to court and may prevail or even get a fair hearing. The courts overwhelmingly don't want to hear our point of view. They don't want to limit a biblical point of view of how our lives should be run. Does that answer your question or have I... Yeah, I, I guess I, I tend to go with a slippery slope in my mind and I'm envisioning, you know, all the things said about women and, and, and I mean, there's just all sorts of ways you could take this that seem kind of scary to me uh, as, I, as I think about it. Right. And they are. And that's the problem. And yes, there is a slippery slope and we need to stand at the top of the slope before anybody starts heading down and say, no, this is wrong. And we need to be loud. We need to be in unison. All of us need to call at the same time. Uh, by the way, and I'll admit my own sins here, okay? I am, this, I am wrong. This is a moral and ethical error on my part. However, we have, through Americans United, by asking legislative aides how they feel, what, what goes on, if you call your legislator's office by telephone, and express your opposition to Bill 33, they'll record it. If you send an email, they'll record that as well. If you send a fax, although fax is not used anymore, they'll record that. If you send a letter, they'll record that. And, and by the way, handwritten letters are so rare that they garner a little more attention if you write by hand. And that letter, that fax, that email, and that telephone call in their minds represents four different constituents. So oh. all, I mean, don't tell anybody I told you because it's not wholly honest, but call, send an email, write a letter, uh, send a fax if there's a fax number available on their website and let them know how you feel. Uh, there are plans afoot to throughout the state of Florida devote one day to House Bill 33, everybody writes a letter. And then a week later, everybody makes a phone call to their various uh, uh, representatives offices. And then the next week, everybody sends an email and, and so on. So that over and over again, as we know, the more they hear that, that should influence that. We would hope that would influence them. The hold of the religious right is very strong though, and it's very difficult. And so the religious, religious right is well organized. We need to organize as well. And that's where we're all falling down. Merrill? Yeah, please. It, it's a, is, is my understanding correct that this is actually targeting social media and other uh, providers that might be censoring speech? And, and this uh, is not a so much a government issue as, as much as it is a contention that censorship is wrong in the publics in in, in the uh, in the commercial square. Uh, yes, it is. But uh, so what's happening is it's government intervention using the government to intervene into 
social media, exactly. Where okay, thanks. media had, should have nothing to do with it. Yeah, I mean, the government should have nothing to do with it. And social media, uh, this depends on how close to libertarianism you are, but the government should mind its own business and stay out of it. But here they want to use the government to protect speech. You know what? We have in our state a law that says no foreign law will govern the activities in Florida. I don't remember the exact wording of it. It is an anti-Sharia law that is totally unnecessary. Sharia law, Catholic law, Jewish law, anything, never have any meaning in the courts and in the uh, activities of the state of Florida. But they pass that law so that they can go back, by the way, and this is an example, go back to our constituents and stand in churches when they make campaign speeches and say, see, I'm looking out for people of faith who are under attack. Christmas is under attack. Everything's under attack. Uh, is there anybody from the Apopka area, by the way? Does anybody know the name Gary Siplin? Uh, Gary Siplin was your representative for many years. Uh, because of him, Merry Christmas is the official Florida greeting during the month of December. Now, why do we need that? And why does the government have to weigh in on what the official greeting is? Gary Siplin could go back to his people and say, see, there's a war on Christmas and I'm carrying the banner. So you're going to want to reelect me forever to this seat in the Florida House of Representatives. So they conjure up threats. They conjure up uh, victimhood and then call on us to, uh, and use the government to you know, protect from that, uh, what they perceive as an attack. Well, how, how does this connect to the, um, the state motto? Uh, by the way, not just the state motto in God we trust, uh, representative and now Senator Tim Daniels of Jacksonville entered a bill and it's now required in every classroom, private and public school of the state of Florida to post a sign that says, in God we trust. And, you know, did we need that bill? Is that any business of the state? No, but they did it. And that's the kind of thing that we let slide. And because we all didn't weigh in on that because we don't pay attention to what the legislature is doing up in Tallahassee. Often, by the way, we're misdirected and think the important things are going on in Washington when Tallahassee has a much greater effect on us. But this was the religious right and religious dominionists gaining sway over the government in Tallahassee. And now if you send your children to a school, it's supposed to have in every classroom a sign that says, in God we trust. Now, I've, I've heard that this is part of uh, Project Blitz. Uh, yes, exactly. That's, go ahead. You want to explain, Project? No, no, I know. I was going to let you. I just was, okay. it, it seems related. Right. Yeah. Some of the, you're all too young, but once upon a time, the Baptists had something called Key 73 back in 1973, where they're going to make a major attempt to enter the fields of the government, military, the press, uh, uh, the financial world, and so on, and have it uh, ruled by religious interests and have it used as an expression of dominionism. And so Project Blitz is an, extent, an attempt by right-wing churches and white right-wing religious organizations to extend the, I'll use the word tentacles, it's not, it's, I'm showing my bias, the, ten, the tentacles of the religious world into government, into the press, and so on. So yes, the, In God We Trust is an expression of Project Blitz, and this representative, now Senator Kim Daniels, uh, who's a Democrat, by the way, was applauded. Uh, I happen to be a rabbi who from time to time reads Florida Baptist Witness. You may want to read, it's an online newspaper, Florida Baptist Witness, and she was applauded in their pages. Now it goes back to their consistent, uh, their, uh, uh, her constituents and says, vote for me. I'm endorsed by the Florida Baptists. Right, right, right. Yeah, Kim, Kim Daniels actually lost her election. 
Um, so currently, I think she's out of office. And I, I think that the, um, the signage for every school building is, is required, but it's likely to just be in front of the school as opposed to in the classrooms, right? Uh, I, I, my understanding is that Kim Daniels is very much in the legislature. But I'll check that out for you if you'd like, and that it's required in every classroom. Uh, one of the reasons, by the way, is within Americans United and other organizations, you may want to join this debate. Do we defend against people who want to put up a sign that says, in God we trust in every classroom? Or do we take the offense and ask that the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution be posted in every classroom? And that freedom of religion and uh, the inability of the government to establish religion, that ought to be posted in a classroom. But that so far has gone nowhere. We have to realize that we who want to secularize our government, not have it be religious, are an increasingly small minority. So that's why I recruit, you, got, you have to go out and find members for the Central Florida Free Thought community and ask them to join and ask us all to raise our voices together to fight against this. Were there other comments? Um, there have been several comments. I mean, uh, one person mentioned on, who's on YouTube, because I'm monitoring that as well, mentioned yep. that their representative actually directly dismissed their concerns via email. Okay. Um, but she then went and actively supported his opponent last year. Yeah, um, and I, <laughs> yeah I, I would urge him, and should that happen to any of you, please share that, post that email on your Facebook page, on social media let everybody know that you were dismissed and felt dismissed by the person who's representing you in Tallahassee. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, no, that's great. No, I, that's why we're having yeah. this. Um, another comment from a little while ago, if a 990 exemption isn't already included um, you know, in, in your conversation during today's presentation, yeah. do you support the removal of the exemption from religious organizations and forcing them to comply with all other IRS nonprofit rules. Uh, uh, yes, and in fact, uh, Americans United for Separation of Church and State regularly reports churches to the IRS. Unfortunately, Republicans have gutted IRS, and they can't. The, we get no responses. First of all, once you make a complaint, it's confidential until it's investigated, and. We keep asking, what's the status of this event? What's that? It goes very slowly and it's not very effective. We have, however, in years past, had the tax exempt status of the Christian coalition removed. A church outside of Binghamton, New York, purchased a big billboard and put it on Route 17 and said, God does not. God will not look favorably, I've been Jesus will not look favorably upon a vote for Bill Clinton for president. We have their tax exempt status lifted as well, so that members of their congregation who write checks cannot deduct them on their form 1040. Uh, that's now, there are different opinions. Some say we have to say, you cannot do it. However, based on 501c3, there are some of us who say, Churches can endorse political candidates, and it's fine. Go right ahead. However, you have to tell your constituents that when they write a check to you, you your members, you they cannot deduct that. It's not deductible, and thus there's much less incentive to make donations. They're so interested in the money, believe me, that uh, they are they will stop if you make that threat. But the IRS is not in a position to follow through at the moment. So yes, we are for very much for adhering to the laws that, uh, that nonprofits, it's Internal Revenue Code Section 501c3, those organizations uh, cannot endorse uh, a politician who's running for office. Right, okay. Another question that came about was, um, what about the religious rights of the Satanic Temple? and people that are members of that. I mean, how, how does that play into all this? Uh, uh, a wonderful thing is happening at Christmas time in the State House at Tallahassee, if you're not aware. Uh, 
there were complaints about a Christmas tree, a crash, and so on. Now there's the Satanic Temple uh, has a display in the state capitol as well, aside beside the Christmas tree. There's a Festivus pole, I understand, uh, and there is a some kind of celebra celebratory display belonging to the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Okay. And all hail his noodley appendages. You got it. And what we aim to do, of course, when they talk about religious freedom, they are talking about their right to evangelize in the name of Jesus. When we talk about religious freedom, we want to promote all those others, and it upsets them terribly. Uh, the first, it wasn't too many years ago, the first Hindu gave an invocation in the House of Representatives. In the gallery, mayhem broke out and they threw all sorts of papers down on the people in the uh, chamber of the House of Representatives because a, a Hindu invocation was given and didn't mention Jesus. Uh, but we have to be there to support other religions. So one of the differences between Americans United and for example, the uh, Freedom From Religion Foundation. Freedom From Religion Foundation is opposed to religion. Americans United for Separation of Church and State has many clergy on its staff and on its board of trustees, including me until I timed out, turned out. Uh, and so we are not hostile to religion, but all religions have to be treated equally, including, right, the uh, satanic temples and the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> yeah. Other yeah, no, no, I, I think that's great. I, I also, for anybody who doesn't know, uh, since May of 2014, the CFFC has offered um, a 90 invocations in the area um, with 34 different invocators, um, eight of whom, whom were only, were, were, would be identified as clergy. The rest were just regular citizens. We're going to surpass 100 this year because I've started scheduling for the next year. So it's, we're, we're working hard here to try to make a difference here in Central Florida. And I think one of the things that needs to be done is that needs to be publicized. And that needs to be more widely known, uh, not only on social media, but a little blurb press release needs to be sent to the Sentinel and to every other newspaper and radio station just to let them know. Thanks to email, getting those things out are free. It doesn't, need a 50, doesn't even need a stamp. Just send out and let people know what you're doing. I think at 100, we will. I, I think okay. that'll be worth something. And I, I think a lot of the people in here today have attended them. We've, we, before COVID, we had them as a social event and it was a lot of fun. So I, I think forward it's to it. That making it a social event is an important element. Absolutely. Uh, let me just go on. So here's some good news. Uh, people who had hairstyles uh, called upon by their various religions were discriminated against. You may not do that, thanks to Kamia Brown, who is actually a representative in the State House in Tallahassee from Orange County. Uh, the Gardner Scholarship, Bill 432, just entered, uh, wants to revise the definition of curriculum to allow schools that host Gardner Scholarship kids uh, to go to schools that have religion in their curriculum. Uh, and it's one of many scholarship programs that send kids to private religious schools using state money. Uh, we took that case to court and won the case. And so the state uh, Christian influencers in the state house and the state house of representatives and the state senate went to an organization called ALEC, uh, that writes legislation in Chicago, that writes legislation, and they wrote a bill in Florida that calls for uh, expanding, uh, this is paragraph two, expanding educational opportunities. And how do they do it? By, uh, let's see if I can find it here. So taxpayers, including corporate taxpayers, can make voluntary contributions to a nonprofit scholarship funding organization in Florida that's called Stand Up for Students. And then they get a dollar for dollar tax credit. So that if Walgreens, I'll pick on them, has a $100,000 in state income tax liability, 
they can write a hundred thousand dollar check to uh, the uh, step up for students, and they don't have to pay the money into the state treasury. The state step up for students then breaks it down into scholarships for students to attend private religious schools. Uh, by the way, so when that hundred thousand dollars does not reach the state treasury, who makes up that hundred thousand dollars? You do. I do. In the end, we're all paying so that Walgreens can send $100,000 to step up for students who will send kids to schools that teach religion. And in fact, in some cases, it sends kids to Seventh-day Adventist schools. And Seventh-day Adventist schools teach that the Pope is the Antichrist. And it sends kids to Baptist schools and who teach that, again, Jews are of Satan. And it sends kids to Catholic schools that teach that uh, Mormons are not Christians. And it sends kids to Mormon schools that teach that Catholicism is not. And it sends kids also to Scientology schools, particularly in the Clearwater area. Uh, and so you, in the end, you're making it up, you're paying for that education. Uh, and notice that the statute does not allow the state to prescribe standards of curriculum. Anybody can teach whatever they want. The Orlando Sentinel has been good about exposing these schools. Uh, one of the reporters wanted to talk to the principal of the school and the principal actually was not on the property, was at Valencia Community College, or that whatever it's called now, Valencia, and uh, he was working on his AA degree. That is, he was the principal of a school and did not even have a two-year degree. Uh, so these schools can do anything they want. The state cannot prescribe how they operate, yet they receive state money. Uh, notice it was that program in uh, 2012 and 2013, was capped at $229 million. So you're funding that by that $229 million going to scholarships, send kids to private religious schools. 75% of it goes to private religious schools. And when that $229 million does not show up in the state treasury, you are making up a difference through taxes. Uh, you mentioned about the state funding organizations. Uh, David Williamson has these slides and I'm sure you can ask him for it, I'll be happy. Today in 2019, 2020, not 200 million, but $873 million are in that program to send kids, 75% of it, to religious schools. They learn that dinosaurs and humans probably hung out together and that dragons were totally real. If you read, the curriculum from Life Science of Bob Jones University Press. This is old. If you'd like to help do research. I just, just wanted to pause in there. And I, I know that we've reached the top of the hour and, and yeah. we can we can easily go over. I just was. Uh, I, I'm, I, I will I will finish. So I just wanted everybody to be aware that we, we are aware. And Jocelyn? Yeah. Yes. So we, we don't have to we don't have to stop here. OK, okay. yes, we can. I'm, I'm reaching the end and I'm mindful of the time as well. I don't want to keep you a beautiful Sunday. We have a crisp Sunday afternoon. And I think there are good football games on, but that's another story. Uh, so you are paying to have students learn that dinosaurs and humans hung out together. The dragons were totally real. And you see the scientific basis. And that's because you're sending kids to school that use the life science curriculum from Bob Jones University Press. Uh, and by the way, you're paying for a Florida State Board of Education whose chairperson says, I won't support any evolution being taught as fact in any of our schools. You're footing the bill for that. Uh, let's, let me go on. Uh, you're funding schools that teach that God used the Trail of Tears to bring Indians to Christ. And that's in the curriculum of a Becca book, which comes actually from Pensacola Christian College. The wife of the chancellor's name was Rebecca, and so they called it a Becca book. Very influential in the world of private religious schools, and that's quite a world that I hope you'll visit sometime. Uh, 
you're paying to have people teach that Africa needs religion, Africa is the need of the gospel. By the way, this and the fact that you're paying to have students learn that slave masters were nice guys is part of a, a whole philosophy that teaches that the slave trade was a good thing. You are paying to have school, private schools teach that slave trade was good because it brought pagan blacks to our shores where they could be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You're footing the bill for that. Uh, here's another from Bob Jones University Press, the textbook United States History for Christian Schools, says the KKK was okay. It's um, a better book, United States History, Heritage of Freedom. The Depression wasn't bad as liberals made it sound, as you can imagine. Uh, and here the curriculum is from a Becca book. The textbook is American Government and Christian Perspective, second edition. SCOTUS, and this is the Burger Court, I think. In fact, in the center, you can see Thurgood Marshall. Uh, you are teaching that the Supreme Court of the United States enslaves fetuses. You're paying for that. Uh, the Red Scare isn't over. Those of you who saw signs within the Capitol that communism is the enemy, uh, this helps ring true. That's from the textbook, American Government and Christian Perspective, published by A. Becca Book. Uh, Mark Twain and Emily Dickinson were a couple of hacks because they really didn't uh, uh, emphasize the role that Jesus plays in our lives. Uh, abstract algebra is too complicated. That comes from, go to the website, www.abeckham.com, and there you'll see textbooks offered by the Abeckham Book Company. Uh, gay people have no more rights than child molesters or rapists. That's found in the Teacher Resource Guide to Current Events for Christian Schools from Bob Jones University Press. You're putting that, by the way, and so am I. Uh, environmentalists uh, want to destroy the economies of the world. Uh, globalization is the precursor to the rapture. <clears throat> Adolf Hitler was bad, but Muslims are worse because of what they wanted to do to the Jews. Uh, all of these things we need to speak out about. And so I urge you to go to au.org. There's a place where you can sign up for their emails and for their action alerts when we need to contact our representatives. Uh, they are focused on 50 states. We need to stand up for Florida itself. Uh, like and follow AU, Americans United on social media. Report, there's at the bottom of the page, au.org, is a little box that said, or a little button. Click on it, it says, report a violation. When you report a violation, you say, there's this invocation, or my, there's a, they're putting a crash on the lawn of City Hall. Uh, I jokingly say, a little bell rings on an attorney's desk. His name is Ian Smith sitting in Washington in the AU office, and he begins to salivate. Says, aha, here's a chance for me to write a demand letter and perhaps take it to court. He's done so, you may be not aware, but the city of Deland, Florida, has a cross and an open Bible in their insignia, and Ian is going after them. Uh, they're complaining it'll cost $250,000 to repaint their police cars, change all their stationery, and so on. Uh, he's pretty tenacious. tenacity. Uh, you can join our U Atlantic Coast Facebook group as well. And you can always be in touch with me. I live up here in Palm Coast. There's my email. There's my phone number. Never hesitate to be in touch. Uh, so with that, I will end. I've kept you all long enough. But if you have other comments, questions, or anything else you'd like to share, uh, I'd be happy to uh, respond. Uh, by the way, I'm gratified by some of the people who I haven't seen in a long time uh, and not been in touch with. See them, Karen Karasik is one. I think Will Seaton and others. Uh, I don't have that full list in front of me. Uh, perhaps I'll stop. Everybody can turn on your cameras so that we can see everybody. And, and please, you're welcome to ask questions and, uh, you know, chime in at this point. This has been a wonderful presentation. I see people waving. Hello. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it's good to see you and good to see each other. Uh, since we're all getting out to 
so many concerts and movies and lectures and going out to so many, you know, everybody goes to the opera every week and goes to the movies, goes to, goes to all, all sorts of things. It's good to see each other. We need to reinforce each other. We need to all become activists. Otherwise, we're gonna get what we deserve. You are so correct. If anybody has any questions before I close out, please Rick, chime Rick, in. Rick Gold has a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm with a group that's organizing a Jewish approach to secular, uh, to uh, separation of church and state. And we're marrying the terms separation of church and state with fighting Christian nationalism. To what degree does AU do that? Uh, okay, and, and that's a separate topic in way in some ways. Uh, so the question is, how does AU fight Christian nationalism? So first of all, we monitor what goes on, and some of it reports to you know it can be your individual reports where you see Christian nationalism rising. But there is it's now on our board of trustees. There's a, a book called The House on C Street. It's like a dormitory for congressmen. And it is highly, a highly Christian environment. And Congress, rep congressional representatives get together and have lunch once a week with Christian leaders to push the Christian, uh, a, a Christian point of view in our, uh, uh, you know, in Congress. And so I, that's one, that's our attack is against them because we feel they're operating in states the same kind of way. So that's where you see, we need to lobby our, because there are lots of Christian organizations, Christian nationalists who are lobbying as well and, talking to our representatives and that's what we look for. And we rush in and hopefully get, get an opportunity to give the other point of view, but it's difficult. And one day we're gonna wake up and Christianity will become the state religion and we'll all be subject to Christian values, I'm afraid. Yeah, I hope that sufficiently answers your question. The other others, and if not, Again, you can always email me or call me. I'd be happy. I have a question separate from. Please. Okay. Um, do you have anything to do with the synagogue there in St. Augustine, or the synagogue? Uh, yes. I, I happen to also serve as the president of the St. Augustine Jewish Historical Society. And yes, the oldest continuously operating synagogue in uh, Florida is there in the First Congregation Sons of Israel in St. Augustine. Yeah. I went there last year for Rosh Hashanah. Do you know then Rabbi Fox? Uh, I don't. I know of Rabbi Fox. He was a cantor at one of the congregations, and we can talk about this afterward. If Thank you, you. Or Thank if you can you. email me or call me, but I will. yeah, Thank yeah, you. I'm well familiar with what goes on in St. Augustine. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. To a to a degree. By the way, a very Christian kind of place. The clan is still somewhat active uh, in St. Augustine. We all live in more or less urban areas. I urge you to get in the car and go drive, mostly west for many of you, into the interior of Florida. You're going to find it very red, very Republican, and very Christian. Know that. That's a that's a real problem. Know that. Other. Again, I thank you for this opportunity. Do not hesitate to be in touch. I encourage your active participation and your activism through the Central Florida Free Thought Community and hope that uh, you continue for many years. I, I would yes. urge nobody else is in charge of it. I'll urge you even if somebody else is in charge of it. Well, I thank you so much. Go out and find other people who would benefit by their membership in the CFFC. Thank you, Jocelyn, David. Kind words. It was wonderful to see you. And we, we have truly you. appreciated this partnership and friendship um, on behalf of all of us at the CFFC. Thank you for your Thank advocacy. You. And we really appreciate you being here. Uh, before we let everybody go, I want to let you know that we're excited to announce our next event in two weeks. 
which is going to be a panel discussion with our CFFC board and those of the atheist community of Polk County. That's at a special time at 11 a.m. So it's right after the Winter Park Online Free Thought Cafe event. Uh, we want to enjoy, you know, and enjoy, invite everyone to this informal joint board meeting where we will discuss different types of events that we've had in the past, how they might change and what the future is going to look like for these organizations. We hope you're gonna join us and help us move forward together, you know, bring ideas, bring thoughts. Of course, uh, for the foreseeable future, we're gonna be continuing our online social events, including free thought cafes, secular women's events. Um, these are all Zoom meetings. They're online. You can join us from anywhere when you have an internet connection, even mobile data. A lot of people join via just their phone. And to find out how to join us, you need to sign up on meetup at meetup.com slash CFL Freethought. If you need help connecting, just let us know. The email for the organization is info at cflfreethought.org. And again, if you want the upcoming activity email, sign up at tinyurl slash CFFC newsletter. It's all one word. And with that, we'll let you get on with your day and we hope to see you all soon and bye for now.